All right, it's 11 o'clock. So we're going to get moving. Let's see, there we go. And I'm just going to stop my video so that we can focus on the resources. Um, all right, so today we're going to be covering resources for readers advisory um, and our three major ebook platforms. Um, I'm going to show you this agenda now. There we go. Novelis Plus, which is our go to resource for readers advisory. Um, then we'll go into those three ebook platforms so ProQuest, Ebook Central, Credo Reference, and Homegrown. Um, Novelist is a very powerful resource for finding book recommendations and matching books to readers. Um, so we won't necessarily go too in depth with the platform, but I will show you its main features. And then, and then at the end, I do want to make sure that there's time for Q and A, um, an opportunity to ask questions about other resources and follow up anything um, that we cover in today's session. Let's see. Um, Linda, if you can't hear me right now, uh, a good option would be to um, with your phone and see if that works. Um, sometimes computer can be a little tricky. Anyways, let's move into, all right. I just want to remind you, um, this is your time. So whenever you have a question um, or you'd like me to explain something um, or go over any sort of feature a second time, um, always feel free to find that chat box and um, submit a question privately to me or um, to the whole group. Um, and to start off with that, I just want to do a quick poll. So if you could go to menti.com and put 64099. And I want to get an idea of what do you want to get out of this session? Um, are you most interested in book recommendations? Uh, looking for current trends in readers' advisory, especially in our current situation. Me to show you um, options for reading ebooks offline, resources for book clubs. And so again, menti.com and enter the code 964. Zero nine nine. That's how you can pull. All Great, and you can always vote multiple times. If I'm mostly looking for recommendations. Some folks are looking for ways to read offline. Resources for book clubs. Let's see. I'm just going to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, ideas for book virtual books and sure. Current trends in RA. Yep, definitely. Great. Thank you so much for voting in that. Yeah, definitely gonna look at some current trends. Great. So based on your questions, we'll definitely um, do a lot of time to novelist at the beginning um, and cover some of those ebook platforms that you can use for um, offering virtual readers advisory and virtual book clubs. Um, the next poll that I want to do quickly is just to kind of brainstorm, get an idea of your library and your context. Um, so 
what are the three hardest fiction genres for you um, and your staff or your staff, um, however you'd like to answer this question. Um, Reader's advisory is not easy, um, even if you have extensive book knowledge. Um, it can be challenging to figure out what your readers are into, um, or you may not be familiar with the genres that they're reading. Um, so I just kind of want to brainstorm and learn a bit about everyone here. All right, yeah, so YA, fantasy, romance, Western. Science fiction, horror, romance, nonfiction, okay. Manga, yeah, definitely. It can be really hard with those um, historical fiction, sure. Fantasy, sci-fi, YA, okay, great. And sometimes within those genres like fantasy or sci-fi or or sometimes it's hard to tell what, you know, good YA recommendation or better for an adult audience. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks for doing that. And then I have one more poll before we get into novelist. All right. So we have another for historical Western. So what are the three hardest nonfiction genres for you and or your staff? I think sometimes in Reader's Advisory, nonfiction can kind of get a little bit overlooked, but um, we know that our readers are interested in this. There's so many different facets of nonfiction, memoir, um, you know, historical books about certain time periods and wars and there's a lot going into nonfiction as well. Okay, yeah, literary nonfiction, sure. Self-help, yeah. Mm -hmm. Religion, sure. religion, Christianity, and other true crime, poetry, art, history, bios, self-help, historical, memoir, self-help. Okay, great. This is really helpful. Um, I find sometimes it's easy to dive into our ebook platforms and reader's advisory and think just about the fiction side and not really pay as much attention to nonfiction. And so this is really helpful um, and is gonna give us a focus for today. Hobbies, awesome. Yes, science, great. Thank you all so much. All right, so we'll start off with Novelist. And as I said, this is a database that helps match readers to books. It offers a wide range of content that's created by librarians as well as book ex experts. Um, and it has a really easy to use interface that's uh, designed for both librarians, but also readers in mind. And so we're going to navigate over that now. All right, so here's the homepage of Novelist. Let me get my cursor so that you can kind of see what parts of it I'm hovering over. All right. So what you'll see here, I want to start off with these recommended reads lists on the left. Um, what's really nice about this is it has fiction up front, but it also has nonfiction in the back. 
Um, and so you're able to quickly get recommendations for best of the last year. Um, as you'll notice in here, they have um, historical fiction, science fiction, horror, romance, fantasy. So some of those um, genres that we mentioned earlier. Um, you even get into some of that subgenre by clicking on fantasy and seeing some of those themes that come up like epic fantasy, historical fantasy, steampunk fiction, here be dragons. Um, so it gets even more detailed um, and really allows you to dive deep into genres that you're not familiar with. Um, graphic novels, same thing. So you get all of these subgenres within that broader group, um, alternative comics, science fiction, graphic novels, horror, um, and you get some of those um, other recommendations for subgenres within horror and romance as well and science fiction and westerns. And so there's a lot just in those recommended reads lists alone. Um, and you can filter by age range. So if you're looking for those YA recommendations that are kind of age and reading level appropriate, um, you can find them in there as well. And it also has, um, if you go to that teen section, it has manga included in there. So um, if you click on any one of these, you'll be able to see some of those manga recommendations alongside more traditional graphic novels. What's nice is you have, um, really good way to match um, existing interests and in, like TV shows and movies to books as well. Um, so you have these fun ones here, like for fans of Broadway musicals, for fans of Black Panther, Lizzo, Shakespeare, um, Billie Eilish even. So there's some really cool recommendations just based on like pop culture references. Um, and so that's a really great way if you have kind of a few different, you know, offhand conversations to recommend titles to readers in that way as well. And then you can do it by younger age ranges as well. It's a little bit slow to load. So I'm gonna show you the nonfiction section real quick as well. Ah. All right, it looks like Novelist has timed out. So I'm gonna log back into it to show you. Sorry about that. Sometimes that happens, especially in the last couple of weeks, but then you're able to get back on. So again, um, the nonfiction section is just as helpful. You have biography and memoir, you have true crime recommendations, um, famous cases, general true crime, um, society and culture. So that might have um, some literary nonfiction, cultural pieces. You have some really great must read nonfiction. And so that brings in specific time periods like the Cold War, politics and global affairs, book club best bets for nonfiction fans. So that might be a good place to find resources for starting a virtual book club discussion. Um, that's just kind of handpicked to you for you by novelist. So again, there's so much that you can get from those recommended reads lists on the left alone. But now we're going to look at the appeal recommendations in the middle. So as you can see here, they have them starting off with adult, and then they have these combinations of adjectives that novelist calls appeals. Um, and so the, the appeals that are used right now are upbeat and likable, and then you have reflective and stylistically complex, well-researched and compelling, own voices and moving. Own voices is their category for um, fiction by or nonfiction by diverse authors. So um, people of color, LGBTQ authors, um, ability diverse authors, and so um, novelists has taken great strides in the last couple of years to make sure that their recommendations are diverse and representative of their readers as well. And so again, I can click through these example ones um, for different age ranges, and then I'll show you how you can, can create your own appeal combinations um, in just a few minutes. You can scroll down and see browse genres for age range, 
Um, you can also look at those specific keeping up pages at the bottom. These are really great if you want a quick refresher on a genre like Westerns or YA lit. Um, I know I was a high school English teacher before I um, became a librarian and YA lit was not where my background was. And so using novelists, um, I was able to learn a lot about the fiction that my students were interested in. So I'm gonna scroll back up and show you how to use that search feature. So in this search bar, you can type in a bunch of different keywords. So let's say if I put in Harry Potter, I can click for um, the Harry Potter series or individual titles in the series. If I put in Game of Thrones, I have a couple of other recommendations here for some companion titles. Um, but I'm not going to use any of these recommendations. I'm just going to type in Game of Thrones and see what happens in this search bar. So what that does is it recommends the first book in the series, um, A Song of Ice and Fire. And I can see there's hyperlinks for the first book, um, George R. R. Martin, and the full series, Song of Ice and Fire. I can also see um, I'm in Orange County Public Libraries proxy right now, so I can also check the availability of this title because they have novelists linked to their catalog. Um, so I'm going to click on this first book in the Game of Thrones series, and I'll show you what the item level page looks like. So with this, you have three different types of recommendations in novelists. You have an individual book recommendation, you have the author recommendation and you have the series recommendation but all of the results pages will look as similar to this setup so you'll have um, genre themes character storyline so those are those appeal adjectives that novelist uses um, you get that reading level you also get permalinks which is a really great way to share out recommended reads lists with your patrons um, you can also link to Goodreads accounts. So if you have staff at your library who are avid Goodreads users um, who share out with patrons in that way, um, you can, you know, log on to Goodreads directly from Novelist. The nice thing about kind of compiling recommendations is Novelist allows you to print, email, save to yourself, but you can also create folders of recommendations. And so by clicking on this little folder icon right here, I'm able to create a folder in the top right corner that I can always go back to throughout my session and add more titles to. And if I scroll to, let me see, to the right, I have these things called read alikes And basically what that's doing is novelists, based on that first book in the series, is recommending several titles for it. So if I click view all, I get this full list of recommendations. I can thumbs up or thumbs down them, um, submit that, and then Novelist will update that list to make sure that it's as relevant as possible for the title. Um, so that's a really great way to give feedback within the platform. Oh. Let me get, can I go? back to that item record page. Sometimes you just have to use that back button. I get um, lists and articles as well. So using these tabs in the middle to see some reviews, more about the book. Obviously Game of Thrones is incredibly popular. Um, so they have a lot of materials existing for it. Um, but it also links out to other recommended content in the in the platform. So fantasy starter pack, getting up to speed in fantasy, book discussion guides, which would be great for book clubs and virtual readers advisory. What you can also do with any item record is search for more. So let's say I want to find more books that have been adapted into TV shows um, because I'm a big fan of reading books and then being able to watch the TV version. And so what I can do is check books to TV. Let's say I want something that's really character driven um, and I want a large cast of characters involved as well. So I've checked these three boxes here. 
And then what I can do is just click search and it builds on my existing search. So now I have nine different recommendations for books that have been adapted into TV shows. So I have Under the Dome, a Stephen King title. I can scroll through. I have It, The Handmaid's Tale, um, David Copperfield. But let's say this is too small of a list. What I can always do is, let's say I want, I'm gonna go back and just check character driven and books to TV and click search. And now I have 76 different titles that I can search through and see if those are of interest, like Big Little Lies. Oh, you know, I'd love to read that book and then watch the TV show. Or let's say Wolf Hall or 13 Reasons Why, Sharp Objects. Again, this is just one way that you can find different recommendations. Um, that connect with your existing pop culture taste. So I'm gonna scroll back up and we're gonna go back to those appeals that I mentioned earlier. So if you hover over that toolbar at the top, you have all of these different support pages and links to navigate through. For now, we're just going to look at browse by and then appeal. So this takes the appeal combinations that we saw on the home page and gives us the ability to customize them to our interests. So let's say we have a patron who's looking for something really funny. And so what I can do, because I may not know what the patron sense of humor is, um, I can go to writing style and let's say I want to find something that is witty and let's say I want the tone to be darkly humorous. That kind of allows you to narrow down um, and figure out what, you know, subgenre within something funny they're looking for. Um, and then you can even go into character and have quirky as a recommendation and find titles that way. And now I have 36 different recommendations. I have a book by Evelyn Waugh. I have a book by Neil Gaiman. So I can add to folder. Let's say I have this title by Margaret Atwood that I want to add, I can just hover over and click add to folder. And let's say I want to take out one of these appeal terms and see how that changes. I can always just use one appeal term and find titles that way. Go back. And again, doing tone. I can always use tone and do self-deprecating instead of um, darkly humorous and then writing style as witty. And see some recommendations there from Mindy Kaling and Amy Poehler and David Sedaris. And that allows me to see some nonfiction recommendations as well. So you can use these appeal combos. They're different for different age ranges. Um, so you're not going to find darkly humorous necessarily in YA or ages 9 through 12. But you will find some ones that are relevant, like action-packed. Let's say I want a character who is a strong female character. And then I get YA recommendations based on that. So that's a good way to be able to 
take little anecdotes, comments that readers make, and offer really specific recommendations that match um, onto their interests. So another thing that I want to show you is that browse by genre. So I know that many of you re uh, referenced science fiction, horror, and romance as being tricky genres for you. And so if you go to browse by genre, this is a really great, great way to be able to get familiar with a genre that might be outside of your comfort zone or your taste um, or interest. And so if I scroll down to romance and click explore romance, what that's going to do is show me all of the forthcoming titles right up at the top. I also get some of these subgenres, so contemporary romance, historical romance, Christian romance, paranormal romance, and so it gets really detailed and specific. Um, what's nice is on the right hand side you get these lists and helping readers sections as well. So you get that romance starter pack um, for fans of Outlander. So Novelist again is kind of offering some pop culture recommendations that might be familiar. And you can click on that starter pack and see what are some core texts within that genre that you might not know about and want to get familiar with quickly. What you can also do is, let's say I click on fantasy and go to explore fantasy. If I want to see what those forthcoming fantasy titles are and potentially build some sort of um, recommended reads list that I send out to patrons, I can add in some of those specific appeal terms or subgenres and narrow this list down. So let's say I want to find themes like the laws of magic. So then I'm able to get five very specific results for forthcoming titles that are coming up in the next year. And so that's a really great way to learn about a subgenre, see what's um, and explore those new titles before they even come out so that you can anticipate your readers in us. Sometimes patrons won't necessarily even have a genre in mind. They might have like, you know, a theme of a book or a few kind of phrases like, you know, I'm looking for book where robots take on humans. And so the way to navigate that sort of reader's advisory situation is by going to browse by themes. And then you can see some of those specific themes that are a little bit more niche. And so let's say I want to go to science fiction and then find those themes about rise of the machines or robots with emotions for fans of Westworld or Terminator. And so then you can cl click on that theme and get a bunch of different recommendations like 2001 A Space Odyssey, a title by James Patterson. And find titles that would be of interest there. And then you can always narrow down by age range. So if something seems like it wouldn't be appropriate for the particular patron, you can find age appropriate recommendations that way. All right, so the next thing that I want to show you before we switch gears and talk about ebooks is the advanced search option. So anytime uh, you want to clear your search, click on that novelist plus icon in the left and that'll allow you to clear that search, start over on the home page. 
And so what I'm going to do is click on advanced search and show you some of the options within there. So you can click on award winner and check that box. You can check forthcoming or audience. You can look at media mentions in on the right side here. This is a feature that Novelist added within the last year that shows titles that have been um, referenced or the authors have been interviewed on a show in the last couple of months. And so let's say I want to find all of the titles that have been recommended on Fresh Air on NPR. What I can do is check Fresh Air and then click search at the bottom. And I get all of the recommendations for books that have been on Fresh Air in the last couple of months. And so sometimes those are older titles. Um, if um, the host is interviewing someone who hasn't put out a new book, others are forthcoming as well. And if you click on the particular title and go to that item record page, you'll see the media mentions and what episode or um, day they were referenced. And so that's how you can use that feature. And keep in touch with what people have been hearing about or watching on the news or on radio or podcasts. So another way that you can use this feature is by narrowing by age level. So let's say I, I have a younger reader who's really interested in sports and books about sports. Um, but I want to find out what, you know, reading level roughly they're at or what age range. And so I can click on middle grades and then search. And I get recommendations for different books within this age range. And let's say I want to add in the audience and update those results. And I can also go into sports and recreation, character. And find some recommendations there like touchdown turmoil or cart rival. So then you're able to find some of those recommendations for younger readers, just being at kind of age range, grade level, reading level. Another thing that you can do is let's say I have an audiobook that I'm interested in learning more about. So I'm going to go to audiobook and let's say I want to find um, I'm going to find an audiobook of Joan Didion, someone narrating Joan Didion's work. So what I can do is narrow in this way and see Year of Magical Thinking, and I get that audiobook recommendation as well. I have Slashing Towards Bethlehem and Diane Keaton narrated it, and I see that runtime as well. And I'm able to find that recommendation for an audiobook, and you can check your catalog and see if it's available. So that's another way that you're not just getting um, print books, but you're also getting audiobook recommendations through Novelist. The last thing I want to cover are the quick links up at the top. So you have great resources for book clubs here. So if you click on that, you get recommendations with the latest books that are being published in the last year. You have all of these book discussion guides with discussion starters, summaries of books to help readers um, figure out if that's what they're interested in. Um, another thing to look at is the curricular connections. 
Um, so this is great if you're working with public schools in your area and have a close partnership with them. Um, these give you recommended reads for, for teaching certain skill sets. So like cause and effect, author's purpose, and you can narrow by age range. You can also find like STEAM or STEM titles that are relevant. If you go to feature articles, that's where you'll find some of the current trends in readers advisory that are written by book experts from novelists. So you have homeschooling in the time of COVID-19, reading with kids at home. These give you tips and read-alikes and recommendations for titles that would be a good fit. Horror graphic novels, my top 10. Um, diverse reading, horror, literary fantasy. gift books, you know, all of these different recommendations. Um, that are written by um, the folk novelist. And so that's a really great way to get kind of up to date on what's going on in readers advisory right now, how to how to adapt to the current situation. And then the last thing I want to talk about is how do I so that is their FAQ section. Um, it goes over basics of the platform. Um, if you go to learn how to use Novelist, what that's going to do is open up their um, support page. Um, it links out to their YouTube channel, which has so many great short videos teaching advanced search techniques within the platform. Um, so many good tips for different genres as well. So if you want to dive deep into Western or romance or science fiction, I will link to that YouTube channel um, in the presentation slides that I'll send out later today. You can also go to their Idea Center, and that gives you recommendations for Reader's Advisory um, and some ideas of what other libraries are doing um, around the country right now. So that's another place to check out. So that's Novelist. Um, in the time that we have, I'm going to switch gears and talk a little bit about some ebook platforms that we have. Any questions about Novelist? All right, let's keep moving. So we'll start off with ebook central. This is our largest collection of ebooks that we offer. Um, we subscribe to two collections that are integrated on the platform. So we have Academic Complete for academic libraries and Public Library Complete. Um, they have a broad range of titles from scholarly monographs to um, books from the For Dummies series. Um, new titles are added on a regular basis by their collection development team. And over time, some titles are removed. So I will link out to our title list for eBook Central so you know exactly what titles are available on the platform. Um, what's nice about this is the subscription is unlimited access. So that means that an unlimited number of users can access these books at the same time. In the last couple of months, um, ProQuest has made that so. And especially for their high demand publishers for academic titles. So. Um, Cambridge University Press, Harvard University Press, Duke University Press, all of these major publishers have allowed for unlimited access to their titles. And what used to be the case was, you know, three or four or five people could read one of their eBooks at a time. So they've changed those licenses given the current demand. But if you're not working in an academic library context, I'm gonna pull up. ProQuest Central. This resource is still useful. So let's say I want to put in books on dog training. I can find recommendations. That way I can click on a title. I can download the full book um, as long as I create an account. Um, if I click on it, in order to download the book, you have to download their third-party software, Adobe Digital Editions. Um, and I'll link to the process for that. It's fairly easy and straightforward. You can also read online if you prefer. You can share out permalinks to the book. You have options for highlighting text. 
um, creating notes for yourself, searching within the book. So let's say I'm finding recommendations for food, health, detecting health problems. And so there's some good ways that I can search and read directly in the platform. I can also find some great books for professional development. So you can find anything from dog training to library related titles. And I can find all of these recommendations. Um, I can narrow down by checking the year published on the left hand side. And I see only titles that have been published in the last two years for library outreach. And then I have this great book that is up at the top here, Profiles and Best Practices in Teaching Information Literacy Online. So you can really narrow down that search quickly. Teaching Information Literacy and Writing Studies and find some of those professional development titles really quickly. So those are the basics of using ProQuest eBook Central. Um, it's a pretty standard platform. What I also recommend checking out, um, another way to search is by going to browse subjects. So if I click on browse subjects, I can find titles that way. So let's say I'm looking for religion. I know that some people mentioned religion as being a tough uh, nonfiction genre. This is another way that you can find religious um, nonfiction. So it can be, you know, theology related, um, biblical interpretation, um, historical nonfiction about religion. And so that's a great way to get familiar with nonfiction. Um, basically only 5% of this collection is fiction. And so this is another great resource in a way for readers advisory for nonfiction and allows you to get familiar with a lot of different titles using the browse subjects page. So now we're going to take a look at homegrown, which is our collection. This um, is a resource that we've developed of books published by North Carolina presses and authors. Um, we own these eBooks and, and have negotiated statewide access in perpetuity. So North Carolinians will have full access to these titles forever. Um, I'm just gonna show you this page. So this is actually a really great resource for book clubs right now um, because everyone can have access to it. It's really easy to download um, offline versions of these eBooks. And so you can find fiction recommendations as well as nonfiction. If you go to history, I know that UNC Press has a bunch of different titles in here. You have very like specific time periods. Some are um, regional, regionally specific. Others are international historic nonfiction. And you just have some really interesting recommendations that you can take a look at. You also have some really great like cookbooks because um, I know a bunch of people are, you know, cooking from home now more than ever, baking breads, barbecuing, a bunch of different options here. And this is our collection that grows every year thanks to generous donations from our member libraries. Um, our resource advisory committee selects new books for this collection and then we purchase them. And so none of these titles will ever go away. You have a lot of recommendations for YA, um, children's fiction, YA nonfiction. And then you have some of those subgenres included like romance, mysteries, thrillers, sci-fi, and fantasy. All right. So I have included in this next slide the support page for reading offline on mobile devices. So you can do that on your phone, on a tablet. It's pretty straightforward. You can always contact the help desk and um, we can help you with any issues that you have with homegrown 
or the Biblia board app, which is basically the platform that supports our collection and allows you to read it. The last ebook resource that I want to talk about <clears throat> is Credo Reference. And so it's not typically thought of as an ebook resource. But if you go to this hamburger menu on the left hand side, you can see there are, if you go to all titles, that gives you access to all of the ebooks that they have. Um, I know one person mentioned hobbies as being a challenging nonfiction um, genre. They have so many books for hobbies, photography, graphic design, film, foodies. Um, they have some really great stuff here. Um, you can see based on subjects, looking at arts and leisure and finding some recommendations, fashion, sports. So if I click on sports, I have some recommended title, you know, encyclopedias and whatnot. And so this is also a really great resource um, for careers as well. So if I, let me see, there's, I think it's career. Mm -hmm. All subjects, there we go. Yeah, so you have some really great career planning books um, and job related, job searching, interviewing um, books that are great as well if you have patrons that are looking for support materials online. The other thing I do want to show you um, is if you are at a public library through Credo, you have access to the DK Eyewitness Collection. Um, nope, let me reset all. So these are kind of a go-to juvenile nonfiction collection. Um, so many images, really beautifully done, visually engaging. Um, and they're incredibly popular typically in children's um, sections of the library. And so you can click on the titles, read them at home, um, and provide that access for kids at home right now. So. If um, your library is not offering curbside service, um, pointing patrons to the nonfiction and general reference um, that's available in Credo is a really great way um, to keep them entertained and um, interested in um, educating themselves and learning about new topics. All right. So the last thing that I want to do is um, I sent out this NC Live resources for common patron questions handout. Um, so I'll show you that. Pull up. There we go. So this is our kind of cheat sheet that we use for supporting patrons. It has recommended titles or recommended resources based on certain topics. The bolded ones are kind of the top resource for the topic. So if you could take a look at that and then let me know in Menti or in the chat, are there any other NC Live resources that you'd like to learn about? Ah, so some people um, might have signed up in the last hour or so. Um, so if you didn't get an email from me, um, I can always send that out after the webinar. Yeah, happy to talk about Mango Languages, sure. So this is our go-to language learning resource. Um, what's nice is there is an app version of this as well. Um, all you need to do is create a basic account for Mango. 
and then you're able to learn as many languages as you'd like. Um, and so they have some popular ones, French, English, Japanese, German. With English, um, you have ESL courses that are catered to non-native speakers. And so um, we found in our search engine marketing campaign that a lot of North Carolinians are looking for these resources right now for learning English as a second language. Um, and so if you have um, non-native English speakers at your library who are looking for language learning resources, Mango might be a great way um, for them to learn at home. Um, you have these specialty units too, so job seeking in English, business English, text talk in English. Um, for Spanish as well, you have um, these specialty units like Spanish for librarians, um, helping with job searching, um, obtaining a library card, accessing resources. And so those are great resources for librarians as well. What's nice is it's a great mix of speaking um, and listening exercises. And so you get at the beginning of each chapter um, and each lesson, a set of conversational goals, grammar goals. Um, and so each lesson is really focused with this main conversation at the top. You can check your pronunciation against a native speaker. You have grammar notes, so you can figure out kind of the context of how these phrases fit together. And you also, if you scroll through, get cultural notes as well. So you get that um, social context for how phrases are used. So this is a great way to kind of brush up on your language skills in a particular language or learn one for the first time. You can also go to explore and see some of the foreign films that Mango offers, um, which you have performance rights to. And then the tools, you can always translate um, and use that function for any language in the platform. Yeah, so the folder that I was adding books to from a certain novelist, yeah, that's a great way to create a wish list or a want to read list. Um, it's a good way to develop recommendations for a subgenre. Oh. And um, email those out to yourself. Um, do we have any other NC Live resources? We want to cover. Yeah, so you can use that folder um, to create a wish list, to create a recommended reads list for patrons, um, however you want to um, customize it to your interest. It's just kind of a good way to collect things instead of sending like six or seven different emails to yourself of individual titles. Um, you can also, you know, just copy the permalinks and make it into a spreadsheet or however you want to organize your recommendations that you're putting together. Um, another resource that I want to share out, um, this is not NZ Live specific, but it's called the Panorama Project. Um, and this is a really great resource of direct and indirect activities for readers advisory. Um, it has some activities that you can use with staff um, and it has um, recommendations of what other libraries are doing, um, staff picks, featured titles lists, best of lists. Um, they don't, you know, they have displays, which makes sense, you know, in a physical space, but you also have social media book talks that you can do, uh, social media virtual displays, um, different strategies for reading book groups or book clubs, um, newsletters, reader's advisory podcasts to check out, um, community reading campaigns, community reading challenges, um, 
some tools for novelists and how to link to your catalog. Um, and I know, I know given this current situation that it's kind of hard to think about reader's advisory um, as being separate from the physical space of your library, but this is a great tool for thinking um, kind of outside the box and offering different activities, seeing what other libraries are doing to build skills with reader's advisory, train their staff. Um, so I will link out to that in the presentation slides for today. Yeah, so then the last poll that I have before we wrap up is um, what resource or resources are you most excited to share with your patrons? So if you could go to menti.com and enter that code 964099. All right, great. So the book discussion guides, Novelist Plus. Another thing to think about too with Novelist Plus is um, I know that some libraries are creating online forms on their websites um, and having uh, patrons ask for recommendations, submitting through a form, and then emailing them um, titles in that way. So that's another opportunity for virtual reader's advisory um, that's been popular in the last couple of weeks. It might be a good alternative for your patrons who um, are looking to read independently and may not necessarily be interested in virtual book clubs or um, like very highly social um, op options for readers advisory. All right, so in the last minute or so, I do want to show you um, some of the resources that we have for learning on our on your own. Um, we have tutorials. Um, which are just like nice 10 to 15 minute activities um, where you see the database on the right hand side and have some tasks and activities on the left and it's just kind of a nice low stakes way to get familiar with a resource and feel more confident talking to patrons about it. There's also our shared promotional and instructional materials libguide. Um, so that's a really great resource um, for finding social media graphics, training materials. For novelists, we have a social media graphic that you can share out. Um, you can see their tutorials and their YouTube playlist and some of those videos there. You can also see for ProQuest some uh, materials that are created by the vendor, but also by our member library. So if you've made materials for ProQuest or eBook Central or Homegrown and want to share those, you can always click submit your materials um, and we're always happy to include um, those resources on this guide. And then just a little bit of housekeeping. Ah, before we head out, I do want to let you know um, there will be some student access materials that will be added to the guide in the next month. Um, these were created by a graduate student at UNCG who's been working with us this semester. Um, and we have some materials for younger audiences as well as older grades. And so if you're working with K through 12 schools in your area, um, this is a good collection that we'll add to the guide um, that'll be great to look out for. All right, now finally we'll do some housekeeping. So. Um, always know that you can follow us on social media, um, sign up for our training newsletter, 
our um, promotional newsletter. So it gives you updates on our outreach and events that we have going on. Um, email help at NC Live if you have any issues with our resources or you want to get novelists um, linked up with your catalog. Um, you can call us, but the best way to reach us right now is by email or chat. Um, later today, I will send out a recording of this webinar, um, as well as a feedback survey and the presentation slides that have a lot of support links and tips um, in the notes sections. Um, but always know that you can email me, Devin at NC Live, um, if you have any questions about training or outreach or reader's advisory activities. I'm always happy to offer support um, and chat with you about that. But thank you all so much for taking the time to be here. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. I'll stick around in the chat if you have um, any recommendations or suggestions or things that you'd like to talk about relating to Reader's Advisory.